today, underneath the red kite circling ahead, we're at Picton Castle Gardens. This is just a quick video. I've only really got some basic equipment with me. We're here on a family day out, and I want to show you some of the incredible exotics growing here, starting off with this jungle walk. These are Gunra manicata. As you probably know by now, one of my favorite plants. I should probably say this video is not gonna be highly produced. And in fact, I'm just letting you walk with my camera now. I'm pretty sure this jungle boardwalk's made for children, but I don't care, I'm going for it anyway. And here, the scent coming from these skunk cabbages is really intoxicating. But to me, it's all about these huge gunra. I've got to say, we're in Wales, but this garden is probably the closest thing to some of the calmer ones I've ever seen. There's the same mixture of plants. There's acres upon acres of huge old mature trees, large rhododendrons, ferns that are pretty much the size of tree ferns, then tree ferns as well. There's trachycarpus palms everywhere and there's just miles and miles of streams covered in these huge Gunra plants. Around here, you can just see the edge of the Gunra forest. They seriously go back for miles. It really is an incredible sight to see. And later on in this quick video, you'll be seeing some amazing exotics. Bananas, colocasia, scheffler, pretty much everything you can imagine they grow it here. Seriously, there's just so many of them. They go on and on and on. Each leaf, absolutely colossal. This one here is probably the same size as my largest one at home. I imagine here, it's all about the natural environment they're growing in. Here, you can probably see down there, they're pretty much sat in water. So here, under the dappled shade, lots and lots of water to drink. It's pretty much the perfect conditions for them. Just to give you a quick feel for the space, there's some huge old trees here. You can maybe see the castle in the distance. There's all kinds of chestnut trees, some absolutely huge oak trees. These must be some serious age, these. But, I mean, I could do a whole video all about the incredible trees here. There's absolutely stunning specimens. But we're gonna head towards this exotic garden here. There you might notice a loquat tree pushing up through the canopy. It looks perfectly at home with the oaks behind it. And over here, we've got some incredible exotic plants. Here, for example, we've got bamboos, a trachycarpus fortunia there, looks incredibly healthy, leaves all the way down, and a eucalyptus pushing up into the sky over there. That will soon be as tall as these mighty oak trees, I'm sure. We've got towering cordylines. I can hear those red kites calling out above us. And over there, we've got some astelia, they look really great there. Shows you just how big they can get as well. Following it through, even more bamboos. This is technically a child's play area, so I'm gonna get out reasonably quickly. Thatcher japonica, one of my favorites there, reaching up into the sky. And even more bamboos. But it's the real exotic garden just around here that I know you'll want to see. Heading through, Looking at some of these, bear in mind, we're only in late May, hostas there in full swing, and the banana plants are already pushing through. These are Musa Bajju, and there's some huge specimens here. Euphorbia there, mellifera. That looks dense and jungly. Cord lines reaching up towards the sky, but we'll head through, and have a look at some more the banana plants start rising up out of the ground. And here you can probably see, set amongst the persicaria and all kinds of other jungly plants, these musabajju, they're really, really tall. So looking up at them, you can probably see those stems, the shooter stems are three meters plus. These are proper chunky plants. And if you look over there, you can see that is a musabajju flower. They don't actually produce edible bananas, but those flowers are certainly a sight in themselves. And you probably see, just looking at the size of these shooter stems, these are really chunky. I would say this clump is probably at least five years old, and it probably gives you an idea of just how big they can get. So that clump is definitely two and a half, maybe three meters wide. But if you give it the space, then it'll certainly reward you with the leaves. And at the minute, like I said, we're in late May, so these are only just getting going. In just a month or so's time, these huge paddle-shaped leaves will be arching over us and they'll look fantastic against that blue sky. Got 
more huge bananas here again using the hand for scale monstrous things it's great to see them what you can probably see down here there's all kinds of different gingers pushing through canners so i can only imagine later in the season this bit will look phenomenal We've got all kinds of gingers again under here colocasia big trachycarpus fortunae there and over there a huge clump of these musabaju bananas got a butia palm there butia odorata i imagine and all kinds of colocasia already pushing through no doubt helped by the mild and really damp climate here even more gingers and if i zoom in you can see just how densely grown they are that rhizome is almost like a mat so this will look incredibly impressive and rise up above us just look at that pine just look how long those needles are it's really just looking incredibly exotic of course you've got your usual showy rhododendrons and walking around the woodlands here there's loads of really large leaved varieties but i think these flowering azaleas and rhododendrons would definitely bring the color at this time of year but looking back for me it's all about that exotic structure those bananas seriously look incredible probably not the best weather for photography but everything looks great against that blue sky all the rhododendrons azaleas the trachycarpus flowering away got the musabaju bananas again another huge clump of them probably the tallest yet that definitely four or five meters tall and like i said they're only just getting going A whole island bed of bananas here, Musabajju, and there you can see in the distance some enseti that have presumably just been planted out over the last few weeks and they're already pushing out those huge red leaves. There's loads of different regersia here they look fantastic with the ferns you can really see here just how big those leaves can get each one of those is over half a meter across it looks fantastic there we've got the persicaria more insetti there's a trachycarpus wagnerianus or waggy palm some tetrapanax And under the shade of this tree here, we've got a Shudapanax, really alien-like plant. I personally love them, I think they look great. Definitely a striking addition for your garden. But let's head through here, over to the walled garden. I know you'll love this. And on the way, nestled in there, even more huge clumps of musabaju. You can really see here with the mild climate and this dense woodland setting, they look fantastic. The leaves hardly touched by the wind and they've definitely got a head start on mine. But let's head on to the walled garden. There's some incredible exotics here, some more sun lovers. So you'll just have to imagine as we walk around here, all kinds of slow motion B-roll as we're walking through these gates. But really the first thing that hits you, these cordylines. Look at the height of some of these. The giant things. Just the other side of this Paulonia. So you can definitely see from here just how big cord lines can actually get. These arch up into the sky, definitely over five meters tall, I'd say. Probably getting on for six, seven meters with really thick trunks on them. You see them there sprouting from lower down and you can really imagine here that these can definitely get to be the size of small trees. These are definitely some of the biggest that I've seen in the UK. And this is probably the perfect setting for them. But as we head around, you'll see some more drought resistant and sun loving exotics. There's all kinds of plants here. Huge yuccas, flowers, euphorbia, mixed in with the nephophia, the red hot poker there, 
aeoniums, echeverias. There's a proper mixture of really tough hardy exotics and then some summer bedding style plants, I guess. And they all look fantastic together. This is the kind of vibe that I'm going for around my fire pit. That sort of sparse, really dry, sunny Mediterranean look. And here, I really like this gravel surface. So I'm definitely gonna adopt a sort of gravelly, sandy surface. It just makes the plants pop out against it. Got a large trachycarpus there, phoenix in the distance. That looks like a waggy over there. And here is a yucca restrata, showing just how big they can get before they even form a trunk. That's easily one and a half meters across. Huge yucca gloriosa variegata there. Plenty more palms at the back. Here, we've got a plant. I imagine it could be a fucrea. Actually looking by the way it's flowering. Huge great big inflorescence. But then we've got more yuccas, more of those incredible aeoniums. And at the back, some palms that you don't see every day. I don't know if that's a brahea, but it certainly looks in very good condition. Another fucrea there, reaching up into the sky. That really is an incredible sight to see. More beefy yuccas, another butia. So there's an incredible mixture here of established older plants and then mixed in, we've got all kinds of interesting bedding, new additions. And how good does that olive tree look there? That gnarled old trunk rising up from the shorter plants. So in here, it'd be great to actually speak to the people that put this together. Because we've got loads of cacti, we've got aeoniums. There is a flowering aeonium. We've got an agave, Americana variegata there. All kinds of aeoniums. There's loads of sell in the shop here. And that is an Apuntia, a prickly pear cactus. And it really does look incredibly alien sat there. This is a fantastic display. Got a yucca there. It's a jewel, not the hardiest yucca, but here it might have a chance. And down here are some plants that I'm almost certain come in for winter. And the low there, and just so many of these incredible aeoniums. They really do look fantastic, perfectly at home here. Nestled under the old olive tree there, we've got this fantastic pond. Beautiful fountain there. And seriously, late May, this is probably my favorite times of year. The weather here today is fantastic. The sky is blue and these flowers just look incredible. Got some Xantadesia here, the perfect home for them. And over that side, we've got to the Pashonia. flowering away, probably see it there if I zoom in a bit. That is also incredibly exotic. Loads of water is as well. You can tell here they've got that mixture of a mild climate and everything is beautifully looked after. Even this garden down here, which isn't entirely my sort of style, everything just looks so perfect so well looked after it really is a privilege to see and here dotting in amongst some more cottage style plants we've got a couple of tetrapanaks but there's some bigger ones just around the corner that i'll show you now so if you want exotic blooms with real impact the bashonia yuccoides over there that looks seriously fantastic but heading further around here you can see two echiums and these have definitely got to be one of those exotic plants that everyone should grow when they finally flower, the look is seriously a fantastic thing to have in your garden. They really stand out, even amongst dramatic plants like the cardoons and other younger echiums. Those flower spires, they really make a point. But as we head through here, it's these tetrapanax that I want to show you. On the way, you'll see a Shudapanax latus, those incredibly glossy leaves. It looks almost perfect here. Some Aurelia, spiky stems. Another Echium, covered with bees. And I really love the feel of this place, just how old the walls are, and it just makes everything just pop out against it. But here, just ignoring the little blackbird, this is a Tetrapanax papyrifera rex. Those huge, great big leaves like dinosaur claws. 
here paired with, I believe that's fennel. That looks like a really impressive combo. And again, sandwiched between these echium, this is really an exotic Mediterranean garden with proper impact. I'll just show you how many bees there are here. They're literally fighting over this. There's hundreds of them. It's amazing to see. But over here, past even more Reckium, we've got a towering Tetrapan axe. Look at the size of this beauty. A trunk there that's maybe five or six inches across and reaching over us, you've got that massive canopy. That's definitely a stunner. Over here, some Melianthus major, the leaves that smell like peanut butter. They're very bold architectural plants. And rise up again in the distance, more Aurelia. I am a massive fan of the plant in here, and I'd love to come back and do a proper video sometime. So we continue the walk around. If you're wondering why my voice is a little bit, maybe quieter and slower than usual, it's because there's other people here. So I don't want to sound too enthusiastic but it's hard not to get enthusiastic about the Schefflery there. I believe that's Alpina, that one, with those really glossy leaves mixed in there amongst all the cannas. Here, we've got a Schefflery Taiwaniana. This looks very similar to the ones that I grow at home. It looks fantastic here with that new flush reaching up towards the sky, just pristine condition. In fact, basically everything here is, everything looks so green, so healthy. I really wish I had the time to do some proper slow motion video here and show you a proper walk around. But today I've only really got about half an hour. Well, Alice and the pups have a little break at the cafe, but there's a couple of bits that I just want to show you before I head back. Another Aurelia there, I believe, that spiny stem. There's some real gems just out here. Just on the way, you can see a south here. I believe that's a Medullaris there. Looks a little bit damaged by the winter, but here, under the shelter of this colossal oak tree. It definitely stands a better chance than the one in my garden. This really is the perfect home for so many exotics. Now we're gonna head deep into the woods. Like I said, I really can't do this place justice, especially in a short video like this. But I want to show you some of my highlights, or at least what I've seen anyway. This is one of my favorite trees. I believe a meta sequoia, a colossal thing known as the living fossil. It's been around since the age of the dinosaurs, but only recently rediscovered, I suppose. Got huge buttress-like roots reaching out. And over here, I want to show you a combo that's repeated quite a bit around these gardens. Got some massive Dryptris wallachiana. I told you, they get to nearly, well, over a meter tall. And these here, they just look perfect. Almost like a miniature tree fern reaching up into the sky and here amongst all these azaleas rhododendrons i just love the amount of green and a combo that seems to be repeated quite a bit rogersia with so many different types as well as those dryptris wallachiana just such a stunning collection of greens but as we head through i show you some colors that i know you'll really want to have in your garden there's all kinds of ancient conifers and broadleaf trees, but just look how straight and regular this one is. It's a monstrous tree, but it's just that real pristine buttress to it that really struck me. And if you're a fan of shuttlecock ferns, then here, there's basically fields of them. They carpet the floor. You can see just how well they spread. And they just look so fantastic with these trees behind them towering over and all these exotics. So I think what we'll do, I'll just show you quickly around this bit. This bit really jumped out at me as we're walking around. So around here, we've got all kinds of big leaves and then palms like this rising up amongst them. So this is a Trachycarpus fortunii. And this is probably one of the best examples of a flowering one that I've seen. Just look at how many flowers are on it. Seriously putting on a show. And to me, I know a lot of people say they're messy, but I really love this time of year. I think it definitely gives them that real bit of interest. Certainly adds some color to the garden. 
There's loads of these around. I believe the Podocarpus. I'm not an expert on these kind of trees, but I'd love some input if anyone knows. And heading through here, you can see even more, when I make things a little bit darker, even more of these Trachycarpus rising up. I think in many ways, this garden with the ancient trees, Trachycarpus palms, and all the bamboos that are dotted around, it really reminds me of somewhere like Tregeyan or Treba down in Cornwall. It's definitely got that same vibe. Trachycarpus palms, big leaves behind them. To me, this is a garden that certainly has that exotic woodland vibe. Really is an incredible place. And if you'll just join me now, we'll head on a quick walk through these ancient woodlands. Now, these are some more of those trees that I'd like a bit of help on the ID on if you can. I believe the Podocarpus, and I'm really impressed by the look of them. Seeing that new growth on them, just how they move in the breeze, I think they're a fantastic looking tree. Certainly an unusual evergreen, and in that sense, they also remind me of another of my favourites, which you can see over there, the dramatic monkey puzzle. And this is the perfect place for one. Reaching up into that canopy, that dappled light hitting it, you don't get them much better than that. The branches all the way down to the ground and it's a beautiful, dark, healthy green colour. Just such a stunning mixture of rhododendrons, ancient broadleaf trees, pines, some of which are seriously huge. And there, looking up, you can get an idea of the sun. Seriously, I know this isn't the best conditions for photography, but just for enjoying a place. Late May, around 16, 17, maybe 18 degrees, there's few places I'd rather want to be than enjoying the countryside here in the UK. You can see here some more bamboos. Now, when I talk about clumping bamboos, I think it's important to realise that even some clumpers do get pretty big. They can take up a lot of space, but a lot of these are definitely runners. And you can see them spreading across the woodland floor. But this is what I wanted to show you. Even more gunnera. They seriously go on and on and on. Just colossal leaves that absolutely fill the forest floor. And to me, this is the perfect setting for them. This is definitely like Heligan, this bit. That nice sort of woodland glade feel. The blue sky above us. The trees full of all kinds of different birds. Seriously, what a place to be in a day like this. This is definitely a place I'm going to come back to. Picton Castle Gardens. It's on my list to come back. If I can ever get away for a few days with a camera, <laughs> we'll see. I suppose it's hard to show the scale of those gunnera. I'm six foot three and a bit, the bit's crucial, <laughs> and those would tower over me. They're at least eight foot tall. Huge, great big things. Now, if you ever want to know what makes a happy gunnera, just look down here. A lovely stream, dappled sunlight, planted on this bank. They look incredibly happy. Some of these are obviously younger plants, but they're already reaching up, throwing out those big leaves, and these will be colossal in no time, I'm sure. Everything just looks perfectly at home here. And I'll just pop my camera under here. This seriously is the land of the giants. Just like Treba here, the Gunnera tower over you. And these, like I said, some of these are younger plants. I imagine they've spread them all down this bank here. But they're opening up those huge leaves now, starting to block out the sun. And I think whilst a lot of exotics, they only really get going later in the year, this time of year, gardens like this, Treba and Heligan, when you can come out, see all these green leaves on the trees, the beautiful colours of the magnolias, the azaleas, rhododendrons, you see those with a backdrop, and then these gunner in the foreground. It really is an incredible combo. And here is another one of those Podocarpus beauties. So anyway, it's now time for me to head back. Like I said today, this is just a really quick video. This is definitely a place I want to come back to. And if anyone's got any contacts here, 
I would love to know more about the gardens and ideally come back sometime when we're next in Wales and film a few really nice videos just showing a bit more of these incredible exotics. Seriously a stunning place and I hope this video has been at least watchable. That's what I'll aim for. So thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go now. We're going to go back on the beach with the dogs again. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Just on the way out now, but I wanted to share this moment with you. Here alone in the woods, the colour, the sound of birdsong, the amount of ferns, seriously is an amazing place to be. But just looking back over here, you can see now that bench gives some scale to the gunnera behind. You can see there, like alien eggs, they erupt out, send these huge leaves up towards the sky. And walking underneath them, you can definitely get an idea now with how big they are. Like I said, I'm over six foot tall and these are well above my head height. I'm holding the camera up now and you can just see the size of them. They really just blot out the sky. I'm walking up here, carefully, obviously. <laughs> Looking at that tree, you can see the kind of climate here. There's obviously a lot of humidity, a lot of rainfall and that makes all these plants, all these incredible exotics really thrive. And to really show that off, I wanted to show you this tree fern here. Just look how healthy this tree fern is. Those huge fronds reaching up towards the sky. Plants like this, I don't imagine they get any additional water, but you can just see how healthy that is. The trunk actually increasing in size as it gets larger. And just around the base, got wood wardia, and all kinds of other native and non-native plants. So to me, this is a perfect setting for a tree fern. So I just wanted to include this in the video. It's seriously an impressive sight to see those fronds blowing gracefully in the breeze and just how healthy it looks. So thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.